Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine. Roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This year is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We at Deep Adventure Ministries believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. God is wild. Uh, one of the first things we learn about in wanting to go deeper with God is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We, and, but we are too. We, we are fearsome. We are fearfully and wonderfully made because we are made imagio Dei. We are made in God's image. Normally, I go on with a three- or four-minute uh, monologue. That's what they make me do here, but I'm not going to today because we have an incredible guest on, and I want to get as much time with him on the air as possible. We have Peter Herbeck. He's Vice President of Renewal Ministries. Uh, Peter, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks. I'm looking forward to the adventure, brother. Yeah, it's good so to be good here. To, it's so good to be with you. Besides uh, you, the cross and the goal, and, and you have your, the, your, your daily radio show is, what's the name of it again? I forget. Uh, Fire on the Earth, Ave Maria Radio. Fire yep, on Fire on the Earth. Earth. Yeah, what a he came great to cast fire on the earth, Bear. Praise God, praise God. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, we, you know, here, here it in our in our um, on our radio show, we normally try to get manly men on the show, but I noticed that Peter was drinking tea this morning. You guys, I saw his coffee <laughs> cup; it had a little that little thing that hangs out over the teacup. So, I'm not sure. As soon as I saw that, I thought about pulling the plug, but we'll go ahead and do the the interview anyway. No, it's a sign of. Tremendous confidence in my own masculinity. That's <laughs> oh, it. that's what it is. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, that's what it is. But can, we, can we talk story a little bit before we get really get rolling? Just about your own sure. personal conversion story, because we see you all the time, but we now don't always know yeah. that the story. So, can you yeah. talk story about well, that? Yeah, I, I grew up in a, a, a Catholic home and a small little town, New Ulm, Minnesota. I was one of seven kids. Uh, typical Catholic, you know, Catholic elementary, Catholic high school. My brothers and I were involved in lots of sports, very active, kind of all boy, all over the place. Like, but in the 70s, when I was a teenager, uh, like a lot of guys, my older siblings started drifting away from the faith. I sort of was doing the same thing as I got into high school, though we had to go to Mass every Sunday. Uh, Dad laid, laid down the law, you know, so we'd go to Mass. But uh, anyway... Uh, to make a very long and uh, story I'm so grateful for, story short, is when I was about a junior in high school, the Lord began to awaken my family in a way that we didn't even know was possible. And, you know, again, Catholic schools, weekly mass, all that, but we never talked about the Lord at home. We never, you know, had conversations. He wasn't like a living Lord for us. I mean, I think my mom and dad, had, uh, no question, had real faith, but... Um, we also had a big problem at the center of our life as a family. My dad, who was a tank commander in Patton's Third Army, battled the bulge, all that. He was uh, he could speak fluent German. He was there at the liberation of Mauthausen concentration camp. He was a decorated soldier, and all that. But when he got home, what he developed, what he what he brought home with him was we call it today PTSD. And part of the way, Dad and I noticed some of his other siblings, or excuse me, other friends from the war. Uh, dealt with it in those days. People didn't talk about those issues. And he stuffed a lot of that pain, anger, confusion by drinking. And he was very successful in life and the things that he did, except uh, the drink got him at a certain point. And uh, he went through treatment a few times and nothing ever happened. And um, my junior year in high school, my oldest sister, uh, Kathy, who had a family about lived about three or four hours away from home, called and said, Hey, I'm coming home this weekend. I, I got to tell you something, make sure you guys are all there. And so there's just three or four of us siblings still living at home. She came home and, and she starts talking in a way that no one in my family had ever talked before. We're sitting at the dining room table on a Saturday night. Everybody's there, mom and the, and, and those who are still at home. And dad was out drinking that night. And, and Kathy said, Hey, you guys, I'm going to tell you something at, at, uh, that's happened over the last six months. At our parish, she said, I've, I've joined this Bible study prayer group. That's the first time I ever heard the word prayer group, that mm -hmm. phrase in my life at that time. What year was and this? She, this is 1977, 1977. Okay. And so, and she said, you know, at the we meet once a week. There's a just a small little farming community, a handful of local farmers, you know, and uh, she said, at the end of our meetings on Wednesdays when we meet, we take the time to pray for people's needs. And we've been praying for dad as part of that for the last six months. Well, she said, I'm here because I want to tell you last Wednesday when we prayed, 
Um, I'm walking to the car afterwards, and one of the men from the prayer group, just a local farmer, came and said, Kathy, hey, I got to tell you something. While we were praying for your dad, I felt like the Lord, the Holy Spirit, spoke to my heart and wants me to tell you that he's heard the cry of your family, and he's going to bring healing to your father. And the key is for you guys to come back to him, the siblings, you know, because we were typical 70s Catholics, right? And so, it's hard to describe how unusual that conversation was for us to be sitting around a table. And I'm thinking to myself, there's a farmer in Northern Michigan who heard God, who who God talked to about it, us. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like otherworldly almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then she said, then I'm getting in the car and another guy comes and says the very same thing. She goes, so I'm sitting here today. She goes, I believe that these are words from the Lord for us. And that if we obey the Lord and we put him at the center of our life and give dad over to the Lord and confess our desperate need for him as a family, and it's not only his healing, but our whole family's healing that has to happen. If we say yes to that and really mean it, he's going to help us. And my sister had so much conviction. I knew she wasn't crazy because she had her head on straight. She was, you know, typical kind of solid firstborn, mm -hmm. all that. And there was a passion in her. There was a, there was a life in her that I had not seen. There was a living faith that we never, I never touched it anywhere in my life up to that point in terms of a living person that I knew that had come alive in the faith. And that night I went to bed, I'm laying in bed, junior year in high school. And, uh, I didn't exactly know what to believe. And I said, God, if this is real, nothing more I want than da for dad to be healed. And I got out of bed and knelt down next to my bed for the first time since elementary school, you know, a little kid. And I said, God, if, if you're real, this is real, please heal dad, you know, and, I, and I'll try. I'll try to follow you. I'll try and to keep how old were you again? Junior in high school. Junior in high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then I, uh, so I prayed that prayer and I actually sort of cried myself to sleep a bit that night. I mean, this shed some tears first time in a, in a long time. And uh, what was coming out of me is just my, my desire to see my father healed and hoping that there was something that faith could, it, that's not just the cross we're all supposed to bear, and it's just going to be the way it is, right? He, he, Grandpa was an alcoholic, Dad was an alcoholic, this is the way it's going to be, right, in the family. So um, two weeks later on a Monday night, my dad used to drink a lot of Monday nights for some reason, I don't know if weekends were difficult, but Monday he came night home. Monday football or something? I don't yeah, know. I don't know what it was. It was uh, so I'm waiting up for him as part of my job, the last boy home waiting up for him and uh, I was doing homework at the dining room table and he came home about 11 o'clock, 11 15. And he came and he sat down next to me. Now my dad was, a, as I said, was a tank commander. He was kind of a big athletic guy. And, uh, when he drank, uh, he was not an easy guy to be around. He was, um, he physically would never hurt anybody, but he just had a lot of anger inside him, a lot of pain that would come out. And so I usually wouldn't try to engage him. Uh, so he came and sat down next to me and as he's sitting next to me, I kept my head down doing my homework and I could hear him breathing and I could smell the booze on him. And he said to me, he said, Peter, and I didn't respond to him. And then he said, son, uh, look at me. And he read, reached out and grabbed my arm and he was shaking. His arm was shaking. And he said, son, look at me. And I looked up at him and he started to cry. And I never saw my father shed a tear my entire life. I mean, just a tear was running down his cheek and he said, son, I'm a sick man. And I need help. And he never admitted that he had a problem of any kind whatsoever. And he said, um, I looked at him and here I am 17. And I don't know what I'm talking about. I look at him. And I said, I said, dad, dad, God's going to help us. I'm, I'm having like this out of the body experience. Mm -hmm. Like, how do, what do you know? How do you know? But you, <laughs> you just know? knew it. I just came out of me. And so he got up, went into his home office, dialed up the, our family physician, must have been 20 to 12 at, or something at this point. And he said, uh, Doc, this is Joe Herbeck. I'm a sick SOB is what he said. I remember him saying that. Please help me. He went into treatment the next day, inpatient treatment. We went as a family once a week. At the end of that four weeks, he stood up and said, my name is Joe Herbeck. I'm an alcoholic. I can't live without Jesus Christ at the center of my life. It was a Catholic uh, retreat center, uh, our healing, you know, a deal. And uh, so he then said, um, he came home and you could tell how much things had changed in him. And he was sober from that day till the day he died over 20 wow. years later. It was wow. the most fruitful time of his life. He saw all of his kids come back to the faith. Uh, he was a politician in the hometown that he loved for 12 years, as well as running his business and all the sports stuff. And he was engaged in all the schools and helping build Catholic schools and built the fire stadium. I mean, he just was, he was living life. And he was and, on uh, fire. He, as you're yeah, he, broadcasting. He, he, yeah. he really was. Yeah. And so uh, well, that's, that was the beginning for me, 
there. That's just like the beginning of what? Of realizing that that God is a living God, that he's a mighty God, that he knows us, that he hears our prayers, and that if we believe, if we step in, if we receive it in our hearts and we say, Jesus, I'm going to put you at the center of my life, I need you bad. We need you bad. We can't fix ourselves. We just can't. And we were able to admit it, you know, for the first time. And even the treatment for four weeks is one of the best things that ever happened in my life as a teenager. Just being a part of the discussions of these, of the brokenness of these families, the brokenness of humanity, and helping people be able to uh, engage that in a way in the family, to be able to talk about stuff, difficult problems, feelings for the first time, you know, like anger, pain, be able to, to actually say it to each other and to be able to admit it so we can get, you know, talk about the elephant in the room and all that stuff that comes with that. What a miracle. That, and that, that, that's, you know, um, we're talking with Peter here, Herbeck. He's with Renewal Ministries, vice president there, and he also, of course, he has his radio show, Fire on the Earth, and we all know about crossing the goal and so many other things that he does, and uh, of course, all the speaking that he does. And but that, but that, uh, that, that Fire on the Earth radio show that you have. Remember, Jesus said, "Don't think that I've come to bring peace. I've come to bring a fire." And how I wish it was burning already. I've come to set father against son and daughter against mother and all that. But he he does that to 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 set things right. He he, he puts things in order, almost with sur- surgical precision. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, our, I'll, I will share with you when we get back a moment about our own family and our, how, how we were all converted all in, all in one week. We'll be right back with uh, more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We were just at the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance in Dallas, and it was so powerful to see other like-minded men. Uh, we had, I think, 200 people there. We had all kinds of different men there from different backgrounds, uh, some very scholarly, some just knuckle-draggers like me, and, yeah. and, uh, but just everyone just uh, there for one reason, and that is to advance the kingdom of God. And we know that the critical part of, the, uh, of what is going on in the world today is men need to be manly again. Men need to step into the, the virtues, you know, justice, self-mastery, yep. fortitude, prudence, uh, faith, hope, and love. We need to surrender all that we are to God and be willing to lay our do- lives down for our families, for our kuleana, as we say in Hawaii, though, though the area that God has called us to serve in. We need to be able to, to, um, to really will the true good for the other. And what I saw at the conference was just that we were all looking at how can we help, help you to mm. do what your ministry is. And we have with us today... Peter Herbeck, and Peter, you were just sharing with us about how at the very root of this renewal in your family was your father. Yeah. You know, that that it, it, it starts with the father. The father is the key to to the renewal. You know, when I was, when I around that same time, I was in college, I was a junior in college, and um, I just remember my mother said to me, uh, there's this prayer meeting I've been going to, and I want to invite you to go, and I go, that just sounds horrible, you know, but my, yeah. I trusted my mom so much. I was a student at Baylor University at the time, and uh, and she said, "Well, I'll tell you what. There's a couple of cute girl girls there." So I leaned forward a little bit, and then she said, "And if you go, I'll buy you a pair of new blue jeans." Now she doesn't remember that conversation, but I do because I was really more excited about the blue jeans than anything else. Because you know I'm a poor college kid, and yeah. so I went with her, and I went to that prayer meeting, that Bible study, as they called it, charismatic prayer meeting, and I saw people who seemed to really think that God heard them. You know, I used to do prayers. But I just figured it was echoing off the top of the ceiling, you know, that I was doing a religious act and that God probably heard them. But these people seem to have this vital, personal relationship with the Lord. And I told them, uh, whatever you guys have, I would like that. And they said, well, um, 
that's not a decision you should take lightly. You need to think about it because it's going to cost you everything. And so a week later, I, I went back and they prayed with me and I had this astounding infusion of the power of the Holy Spirit uh, that has changed my life forever. I can see why I read a lot of academic books and, and, and there, uh, of, the, of the Bible days and the early church. And a lot of the people trying to dissect that period say they, they had a profound commitment to the Lord, but they don't get the fact that they ha- had a profound encounter with the Lord too, that that's what, mm-hmm. that's what turned the whole world upside down was the power of the Holy Spirit, the fire on the earth. And I just remember, Peter, from that moment, I just remember the infusion of God's love in my heart, this breaking away of, of any, um, any sort of uh, shame that I had, that the Lord caught, brought me forgiveness and healing. And I just remember my hands automatically went up in praise, and I yeah. began to praise the Lord in a new language. And uh, yeah. I, I remember this, that the language that the Lord gave me then was kind of a rough-sounding language. And I <laughs> went home that night, and my dad goes, so what happened? And I told him what happened. He goes, well, let me hear it. And he said, I recognize that that's, uh, he's Ukrainian. He says, it's a similar dialect. I recognize the word God. I recognize the word love. And, and then my dad made a big mistake. He invited the, he, he met the two guys that led it, Charles DeVoe and, and, and uh, uh, Charles DeVoe, and I forget the other, other person's name. And, uh, and he said, um, why don't you come over sometime? Which to my dad means don't ever come over to my house. He wasn't a very personal <laughs> person. They came on Friday and my, and just in your, like in your family, they came that Friday. My dad was uh, a workaholic, so I hardly <laughs> knew him. He was hardly ever, he was never had any time for us. Not, a, not an alcoholic, though, but a workaholic. And I just remember they came over, and, and, and dad said, but I'm so unworthy. I'm so unworthy. And uh, he said, well, this is a come-as-you-are party. Yeah, And so, so they, good. He, so he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and as I, we were praying over him, of course, I was all experienced. I was three days old in the Lord, so I knew everything, you know. I mean, you really feel like you do, because once you've, experience yeah. the encounter with God. You do know a lot. Mm-hmm. You just know that God is love. As I prayed over him, my language changed into the language it is now. How about that? So there's people, yeah. there's people today, Peter, that, and so at the core of art, then that became uh, my father, and then the whole family was converted, and then we mm. helped start the New Heart community in Waco, Texas. But, um, but there's so many people today, right now, that, that come to my men's, my Bears Man Cave or different places where I meet them, and they want to know about more about why the gift of why the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and more, and they want to experience uh, the the charisms, but how do they go about doing that now? I mean, what would you say to why why do we want that ex- experience, and what what would you say to them about how they can the, espe- the men especially how they can go? No, how can they avail question. themselves of that opportunity? Yeah, it's a great question, and I, I think just even before I answer that, just the fact that the Lord touching your heart and your capacity to be able to pray with your dad like that. What a, what an amazing, miraculous moment that was. He's you know? a deacon now. But you, your father and my father didn't know what they didn't know, right? They didn't know what they didn't have. They didn't know what else was out there. Your dad's feeling like, I'm not worthy, because most men don't feel very spiritual. And they somehow mm-hmm. feel a little bit like, you know, at the end of the day, I hope God thinks I'm okay because I'm working hard to balance out, you know, I hope I'm doing more good than bad and I'm going to make it somehow, at least get into purgatory or get a foot in the door. And they don't have confidence in the Lord. They don't know how much the Lord loves them. My dad was beating himself up, you know, because of his experiences in the war. And when the Lord began to touch his heart, it changed his life. And you described how the Lord touched your heart. And that's really the what this grace of what the recent popes have called, you know, the grace of a new Pentecost, right? Pope Francis calls it a current of grace in and for the church. John Paul II said, we're living, we're witnessing a privileged moment. Actually, Paul VI said, we're living in a privileged moment of the Holy Spirit. When the graces of Pentecost, these the outpouring of the presence of the Spirit and the gifts that accompany the living presence of the Spirit are, are emerging again in the lives of ordinary people. John Paul II said at one point, really astounding thing in 1998, he said at the council, at the Second Vatican Council, the bishops of the world rediscovered the charismatic dimension, his exact word, rediscovered the charismatic dimension as being co-essential with the institutional of making up what the church is. You asked why this is so important. There's a 25 cent word here that I described. What's the Holy Father talking about? 
He said, as co-essential with, with the work of the Spirit and the institution, what Jesus established, you know, the, the sacraments, the priesthood, the apostolic succession, that in, the, the kind of the foundational institutional pieces. He said, but it's all enlivened, and the whole church lives by the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ's own life, the promise. And when he said, you know, one of the last things he said, Luke 24, uh, he comes to the upper room. It's the first, you know, uh, post-resurrection appearance of Jesus in Luke's gospel. And what does he say to the apostles? He said, you're my witnesses. Everything that's happened to me is going, happened to me was according to the scripture. And all of it has led to this moment. And what this is all about now is, you know, that I, that I died, I rose again. So you're going to witness to my resurrection and you're going to bring the forgiveness of sins to a world that needs the forgiveness of sin. So there's the core of their assignment. And then Jesus says to them very clearly, but you need to wait. You need to wait until I clothe you with power. And that word power, the Greek word, there's dunamis, which means dynamite. I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. He said the promise of the Father. So Pope John, uh, Pope Benedict the 16th said that the giving of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit that empower and enable the church to fulfill its mission. He said this was the culmination, the day of Pentecost, of Jesus' entire mission. Because it's Jesus having now in human flesh brought that into the presence of the Father in his own flesh, and he's sitting, the Son of God, at the right hand of the Father. And Peter proclaimed on Acts chapter 2, he said very clearly that the Father gave over the promise, Holy Spirit, to the Son. The Father and the Son poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And Peter said, what's all this about? It's the fulfillment of the prophetic words of Isaiah, of Jeremiah, and others, that the day's coming when the Spirit that's on the Messiah, that flows from the Messiah, will literally be poured out on all flesh, and not just on Moses, not just on David, not just on unique prophets, but those are signs of what God intended to do and did it perfectly in the Son. And so the church lives by the grace of the Spirit in her sacraments, but the grace of the Spirit flowing through the sacraments to us and awakening the gifts that, that again, the, the recent popes and the magisterium remind us that they're just echoing the scripture and the words of Jesus and the apostles that every baptized person has been given spiritual gifts to each has been given a manifestation of the spirit for the common good. And that the important word there for me is power in the sense of spiritual power to do a spiritual work that Jesus has purposed us to be able to engage in. So building the kingdom, calling men to follow Christ, whatever it is we're doing, in order for it to be fruitful, it has to flow from the living Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will give us gifts of, some, some of us will be teachers, some of us will be, have gifts of healing and administration, and some of us are going to have gifts of words of knowledge and preaching and the rest of it. But the key is that the church moves forward in power by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And all we've been talking about is not something strange, not just an emotional experience. This is the inheritance of what it means to be a Catholic, what it means to be a Christian. This is living in, as Pope Paul VI said, the church's perennial Pentecost. She lives and must live in her perennial Pentecost, is we're what he said. So to, that's what we're, we're talking about. We're talking to Peter Herbeck. That's what he talks about. Peter Herbeck loves the Lord and is involved in renewal ministries, vice president there, and talks about, you know, the third person of the Holy Trinity is a person, and you can get to Amen. know him too. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to encourage people to go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, because if you go there, you can see how great Peter Herbeck actually looks in person. You can, you can subscribe to our radio shows. We have my every morning my 15-minute Ocean Sunrise Catechism classes the Bear Wozniak on Chain, which is just ran random stuff that we do. And uh, our whole TV series you can uh, view on iTunes or Google Play or Prime Video or, or YouTube TV. It's on the Armed Forces Network right now, too. And, of course, the Season 2 is coming out on EWTN uh, in September. So about the time you're listening to this, you'll, it'll be on. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can go to deepadventure.com to find out more. We'll be right back. That's right. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. 
go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe, get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We got to encourage you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. And uh, you can, if you go there, you can join Bear's Man Cave. Uh, it's a secret Facebook group. You can't join it by, by going to Facebook. You have to go to our website. But if you go there, you join the Man Cave. And then we have a, a lot a ton of men there in the Man Cave that share uh, their own uh, insights, inspirations. We challenge you. We equip you. We mobilize you to start your own men's ministry. And... Um, about every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat meetup where we all get together and talk story with each other, maybe have a cigar. One of my Bears Man Cave, Seven Virtue Cigars, uh, maybe a shot of whiskey, and we talk story about the Lord and just go deeper with God. And, and uh, you know, cigars are really important, men, because it's one way to find solitude. No, no one wants to be around you. You can do the G.K. Chesterton thing and, and maybe get some deeper prayer time in, too. But we've got Peter Herbeck with us. I want to I say something, Peter, and we'll talk about this one area. So... Um, you know, I, when I read these scholarly books about the New Testament days, and they speak about uh, cl- glossolalia or tongues as an ecstatic utterance, but it really isn't that at all. I, I mean, right now, both you and I could just begin to pray. We don't have to work ourselves up. The gift is just right there, resident uh, throughout the day. There's a time when I use the gift. So I want to mention some. So tongues seems to be one of the things that it's kind of like the the strange uncle that shows up at Christmas time and people are like, what's that all about? But I remember one time I was asking the Lord about that and it seemed really clear to me when I used to lead the worship in uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, uh, at a, a church that basically became a charismatic Catholic church. Uh, uh, you know, what was so beautiful was mo- it was over half Latino, but they would pray in English with us, you know, because Latinos tend to speak more than one language and I didn't, you know, but it was so beautiful when we would gather in small groups and they would pray in Spanish. When they would pray in their native tongue, it was so beautiful. It was so much more heartfelt. Um, and, you know, as, as Christians, we're citizens of heaven. So it's only natural that we would speak in our native tongue. In fact, it's illogical that we wouldn't. And our native tongue is the heavenly language. So it's, it's not some strange phenomena that we would pray in a heavenly language. It's only logical. But once we release, once we receive that unique gift of tongues, it seems to, uh, it, it, it seems to be the, the, the river begins to flow and the other charisms, charisms come. And I know when I'm praying for someone, especially if I'm praying with them in person, I, I may not, I may, I'll pray in tongues sometimes very softly so they don't know that I'm praying in tongues or sometimes I'll ask him if I can. But it's during that praying in the spirit like that that my discernment comes and then I can know better how to pray them, pray for them and, and minister to them. It's, it's, it's an incredible gift because I can be praying. Sometimes you do have that experience of the groaning in prayer. And maybe I'm praying for someone right now in Nigeria that's being, you know, or, or in the Middle East that's being persecuted. Who knows how the Holy Spirit is praying through you? Can you just... Bring that. That's one of the elephants in the room too, right? You mentioned that earlier. Is this, mm-hmm. this the gift of the the gift of tongues and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit? What's that? What is that moment like when we pray for someone? And they, how does that happen? And what? 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 Yeah. Why? Well, it's a uh, it's a personal prayer language, and the, this, the New Testament talks about it in a couple of different ways, like uh, the apostles on on Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost. They received the gift of tongues, and that particular manifestation of the gift of tongues was as they spoke, as Peter preached, people with different, from different languages all understood him at the same time. So it was kind of a, a miracle of healing, of hearing, excuse me, a miracle of hearing as Peter spoke. But St. Paul talks very clearly about a personal prayer language. He said, where our spirit prays within us, and that is that what spirit? The spirit of the Holy Spirit touches our spirit, and the Holy Spirit gives us the capacity to pray in a heavenly language. And he said, it, we pray in utterances we don't even understand. Now, sometimes that prayer language, speaking in tongues, might include what you actually spoke about earlier. You, As you described to your father, as you prayed the prayer that you received from your father, your father heard words in Ukrainian very clearly. Now, that's hap- that happens as well. But for most of us, 
the personal prayer language is the spirit praying within us. It's not some kind of strange trance or we're not overcome or overpowered. We very peacefully cooperate with the, the cry of the Holy Spirit within us that wants to lead us and teach us how to pray and teach us how to pray in the, in the heavenly language. And so it's really very simple. And it sounds something like this, you know, shiamba, something like this. But that's just how, I mean, I could just feel it in my heart. It, you did get you know all what I mean? You weren't all ecstatic and excited. Just, it's yeah. just like some it's people general, speak It's gentle, it's beautiful, it's, it's peaceful. Yeah. yeah. And so because it's unusual, and for guys, this is a tough one because we do not let, like to let go. It takes trust and childlike faith and a simple surrender in obedience to God's word in obedience to the Lord and the Holy Spirit, to open yourself up to even that possibility. It confounds the mind, and it also reveals the heart, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, at the same time. And ah. so uh, we, we don't we don't like to do things that make us feel uncomfortable or that are unusual, even though the Scripture teaches this very clearly. Isn't it interesting? St. Paul said, um, I would have you, brethren, that none of you be ignorant of spiritual gifts. I don't, it's important that you not be ignorant of spiritual gifts, but guess what? I mean, in my 12 years of Catholic education, even through college, I have to say it, you know, in terms of the theology classes I took and the master's level classes and even beyond, no one really talks about uh, the charisms. If they do, it's in a very technical theological way. And there's never a direct application or any expectation right. that these things would be manifested in a person's life. And so here's the key bear that the recent popes ha- is there in their role of interpreting what the Spirit is saying to the church is to say, look, what we're experiencing, and tongues is one of those gifts, is the awakening of spiritual gifts at a time of real difficulty and crisis in the church for Catholics to come awake more to the faith, be empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit, and to move in it. And so it takes openness and expectation to do that. And so I don't know if that, that's helpful. Well, you know, it's, it, it's, this is that the gift of tongues seems to be the doorway for so many other of the gifts to be mm-hmm. activated because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Paul, p- people will quote, well, Paul said, you know, it's better that you have love than you have all these gifts. But he did say to them, I praise God that I pray in tongues more than any of you. And I have found in my own life, you talk about manliness. I'm just remembering my, one of my sons coming over to my house one, one afternoon. He said, God came, t- told me to come speak to you, to come pray for you. And at that moment, we had some real severe issues going on that were one of the, you know, those kind of issues that you can't, you, you, like you pray the Novena to Mary on Tire of Knots is one of those, yeah. five of those, four or five of those situations. And he came over. He didn't know what was going on in my life. You want to talk about a manly prayer, man. When he, he began to pray, and then he began to pray in the Spirit. And then there just began to be this warrior fire in him when he prayed in tongues. And everything that needed to be kind of like exploded Within a matter of 17 days, these five issues that were going on were no longer, they were just gone. He, yeah. he followed the leading of the Spirit. So Pete, you talk about man being manly. You know, when I pray in the Spirit, um, and I'll pray to Coriander da Basiliana Machine did it, but you know, it's a different Coranda da Basite. You know, it's a different language than yours, but it's a heavenly language. It's not a language that you hear on earth, it's a heavenly language, but it's, we're definitely under control. But there are times when I pray and when I, I sense the sweet praise welling up in me. I, I sense intimacy with the Lord. There are times when I have a deep groaning of intercession. And then there's sometimes when I know I'm doing spiritual battle. And if you're a man and you want to do spiritual battle, you should grab the rosary and you should pray in tongues because, uh, because that you, you're praying the prayer that the Holy Spirit's leading you in. So when someone wants to receive that gift, what would you say? You have about a minute here to tell them uh, before our next break. How, how, where, where, they should, where should they go to, uh, to go deeper in this. I have one man right now, I'm thinking of John Clapucci, that wants to go deeper in this area. He's, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think the, the first thing you're describing, for the start, start first of all with that hunger, with that zeal. Start on your knees, actually. You could just begin to ask the Lord each day, Lord, I want all the spiritual gifts that you've given me, that you have for me. You're my king, you're my master, you're my Lord. You've, did, you've equipped me because you want to deploy me, and I'm not even sure what all that is, but I want it, and I'm open to it, and I'm giving you the free, just let's go, Lord. I got one life to live. I want it. I want to be hungry for it. So that's kind of the starting point. And then in lots of parishes have prayer groups or offer things like Life in the Spirit seminars Those and things are like great. that. Those are great. The Life in the Spirit seminar is a great way to go. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a great, it's just simple introduction to a fuller life in the Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. what it means to follow and live under the Lordship of Jesus. And so people will help you, and it may, and if there's people in probably every single parish, there are people who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit that is this release of this Pentecost graces in them. Ask your pastor, ask around, find out who it is, and just find out, find a man in your parish. If you can't find a man, find a woman even in your parish, because... Uh, and ask them, say, look, I want to know more about this. And I know I'm supposed to ask people for prayer for it. I'm up for it. I just don't know what to do. So can you help me out? I mean, that's a simple, and simplest way to do it, I think. people involved in the evangelization pray in tongues, but we just don't talk about that. But So we need to begin talking, yeah. having this discussion yeah. more. We're talking with Peter Herbeck from Renewal Ministries, which is a great place to go to if you want to find out more about how to be prayed with, to receive the baptism of the Spirit. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, We want to let you guys know that the Bear Wozniak Adventure, excuse me, the the Long Ride Home Motorcycle TV show is showing on EWTN again and uh, season two. But if you would like to receive all of season one and all of season two, and every single episode of the of subsequent seasons as they're edited. For example, season three, uh, episode one, is available right now, uh, the director's cut, be- a year before it will ever even air on EWTN. So if you want to be, uh, if you would like to receive Long Ride Home uh, before uh, it even airs, you can get all of season one, all of season two, and every episode as it airs. Go to, the, go to deepadventure.com and click the Patreon uh, donor button there, and we will release those to you as they're ready, so you can have all of all of Long Ride Home, everything that's available, right up to the current director's cut, and a year before it even airs on EWTN. Plus, all of our Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows, you get them a whole month early, and you get them the video version, so you can see what our guest Peter Urbeck uh, looks like. I caught him red-handed today too. You would never know this if you were on on radio with him, but as we're about to start our our, our show today, he was drinking tea, you guys. I mean, he had a, cu- a cup of tea with a little tea. tea th- so what's no, the deal with that, Peter? But Why I, don't but you- I, I didn't stick my finger. Yeah, yeah my yeah, pinky. Yeah, well, yeah, here's the deal. Here's out. the deal. Believe this or not, I've, I've never had a full cup of coffee in my life because I never acquired the taste for it. I tried it when I was in high school and I, I worked at a gas station. Yeah, Remember but- the days you used to pump the gas for people? Yeah. And, I, and I tried it in the morning because I needed a little kick and it didn't work. But then when I started traveling, like we've done international missions here the last 40 years, part of what we do working with the church in Eastern Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, kind of all over the world. Praise and God. so, uh, yeah. And one of the things I, I needed at times, just my body, cause you, the clock is all screwed up when you fly to Africa or whatever. I need a little caffeine in the morning and I tried coffee and it just didn't work. And I said, Hey, how about tea? Cause a lot of people drink tea all over the world. A lot of men drink tea. A lot of you know? real, okay. I don't know, man. If GK yeah. Chesterton drinks it, maybe I can, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. But back to what I said earlier, the bottom line is I feel secure enough as a man to drink anything that you know, <laughs> works. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so, so be careful not to drink the sleepy time key at the beginning of the day, I guess. Right. Hey, yeah, so let, I let's start with a kick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want you to, can you speak to men now? What, what, what what's what's the what what do we need to be speaking to men? What is the Holy Spirit saying to men today? Yeah, so much. Uh, the the key the key thing is is that um, two things. One is just personal to say what what Jesus wants you to know, and what He wants to do is to open your life uh, to a fuller relationship with Him if you'll let Him do it. He He loves you. He and what that means. Think about this. Think about this the other day. He was born of Mary. He's a man. He's the God man. He's a man, which means he has human emotions. He has human thoughts. He has human passions. He has all that stuff. And what did he say? So he, like you, you know, he wants to bond with you. Funny. He, he loves to be, he's a man, so he loves to be with men. He loves to talk to you like a man, but he wants to love you. He said, I love you the way the Father loves me. He wants us to know that. That's the most freeing thing. So a lot of guys are stuck with, you know, feeling like some way the Lord is distant. Maybe he's not happy with them. 
and in our own heads, we're accusing ourselves of falling short. The devil's always looking to, to get us to be distracted and not to open ourselves to the Lord fully because we don't see a lot of models in the world of people that we're impressed by, men that we're impressed by, that are radically opening up their heart. Now, if you look for it, you find it. But I'm talking mm. about just in the media and the rest of it. It's, it looks as if hardly anyone is doing that. So guys, wanna, we want to hold our cards close to the vest. We don't want to get too spiritual. We want to fit in. We want to look manly. And getting serious about religion can seem unmanly to some people. And what it is, is it's getting in touch with and, and experiencing the fulfillment of your own heart and what it means to be a man. Like, you can't believe this. The person of Jesus reveals manhood to us. Mm. But he wants to have a relationship with you that, that you know that you're loved, that he's patient with you, he's kind, he's good, he's gentle, he's got a plan for your life, mm -hmm. he wants to call you into it, he wants to empower you, and take it from us. I mean, here's two imperfect guys that are getting together early in the morning to, to, to record something, to talk to you, to be able to say this, look, we didn't know what we didn't know for a long time. Until we met mm. the Lord, it was mm. a game changer. And there's no one yeah. like him. He's mighty. He's awesome. He's powerful. He's the captain of the armies of heaven. He made everything. Everything's been made for him. You were made for him. And he's got a mission, the ultimate battle, the ultimate mission. You were made, brothers, in this moment. And the second thing I just want to say is, first, be open to receiving everything Jesus has for you and beg him for it and he'll give it to you. Secondly, I just want to say, this is a man hour for the church. You know, everybody knows the church is going through great trial. The church is, the, the Lord is purifying his church. He disciplines those whom he loves, scripture says. And what's he doing? He's exposing the hypocrisy. He's exposing sin. Why? Because he, because he wants to make a mockery of people. He wants people to feel, no, he's doing it because for a long time he came in mercy, which he loves to do. He knows it's, he's not surprised that we fall. He's not surprised that we were sinful. He just doesn't like it. If we don't admit it, and when we, he comes to us in mercy, we, can, we double down on the sin, because what he has to do, then he has to reach us with a severe mercy. If he's not going to get our attention with mercy, he's going to let stuff unfold in your life that, that our sinful decisions lead us to. Like, my, for example, my dad I was talking about earlier in the show. Good man, Catholic man, but he struggled, had lots of pain, but he had lots of anger. How did he deal with it? In an ungodly way. And he said, no, I'm, I have control over my life. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't have any problems, you know, that I can't handle. And he did. And what ended up happening is he doubled down on it because the devil kept leading him into it. He looked to find his sort of solace and escape in it. And he became, it, he fell in bondage to it. And guess what? It, it affected people, it affected his children, his wife, his, you know, and friends. And generations to come. And, 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 gener fixed. and generations, yeah. And so. Because you said his father before him was like that. Yeah, yeah, and it, thanks be to God, it broke in that generation. Because mm -hmm. why? Because, because Dad, in his weakness, was able to say, I mean, on the outside, he was the decorated war hero, successful businessman, tough German guy, I got everything under control, all that. But what ended up happening was his, his very weakness, the devil's strategy to destroy Dad and the family, became the means through which God's grace came to all of us and transformed us as a family and lit my dad up, lit mm. us up as a family. To this day, 40 years later, siblings, grandkids, you know, living for the Lord, not every single one, not every single grandkid, but the vast majority of them mm. uh, the, living the faith there because he said, I need help. I'm a sinful man. Lord, my plan ain't working. I want your plan. I want you to be the Lord of my life. And brothers, right now, the Lord's trying to get the attention, and he will get it. He's getting the attention of the leadership of the church. And we also know how many people are leaving the church, and, and our culture is living in a Psalm 2 moment there, where the kings of the earth are setting themselves against the Lord and his anointed, where they're marginalizing God radically from the culture. And a lot of us, what gets revealed, brothers, is we're more attached to the culture than we're attached to God. We have more fear of being out of line with the culture than we have fear of the holy God. And Jesus is revealing that. And that's all of a sudden, you guys say, hey, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for a, a faith that was going to marginalize me in some way or make me look like I'm a... Uh, uh, someone the culture doesn't like. I'm a homophobe or I'm this, that, or the other thing. So I'm just going to quietly back away and drift with the culture. I'm not going to get too serious about religion. This is a moment that the Lord is exposing and he's saying, who's ready to stand up for me? Who loves me so radically? Who's got the fear of the Lord in their bones? 
Who's the one that's radically committed to the king when the king's worldview, his kingdom, is radically being challenged by the kingdom of this age? And we're living through a ferocious spiritual battle. And men are meant to lead this. We're made for it. But a lot of guys don't know anything about it because nope. they don't know the Lord. They don't know Peter, the king. Pray, we got a minute and a half. Pray that. Yeah. Pray, lead them in prayer right now for their okay, initial conversion pray. or for yeah. the deeper conversion. Yeah, brothers, pray with me. If you want to give your heart more deeply to Christ today, just say, Lord Jesus, I sit here today or I stand wherever you are. Lord Jesus, I need you. I'm not here in this place. My heart's not there, but I want to be there. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to uh, come into my heart and release the power of your Holy Spirit and to help me put you at the center of my life. Jesus, come and be Lord of my life. I want you. I want your plan. I want to be everything you made me to be in the little time you've given us here on earth. And I know I'm going to be dead soon. Even if I'm young, life is over like that. I don't want to miss my purpose. And I want to be a part of your answer and solution to the crisis for the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. And continue to seek him. Um, the Lord says, if you seek me, I will let you find me. If, if you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. I know what I have in store for you, plans for peace, not destruction, a future reserved for you, full of hope. Wouldn't you like to be among the men who proclaim good news? This is good news. Even standing up in the face of our culture and being potentially marginalized or even martyred, or at least in the sense martyred, you, you might stand up, have to stand up in certain ways in your workplace. That means you're not going to get that, that, that career advancement. That means you may have to get a different job. It's time for us to step step with wisdom uh, and with conviction to proclaim the good news. It's good news for the world that you carry. This is Bear Wozniak. We're talking with Peter Herbeck from Renewal Ministries. You can find him there, renewalministries.net. Peter, any last words before we go? No, first of all, just thank you for uh, doing this, Bear. Thanks for the leadership you're uh, engaging with men. I wish I could uh, surf with you someday. But other than yeah, that, absolutely. It's a, it, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great— <laughs> It's, it's great to stand with other men. And when men get radical for Christ, when they really give them their hearts and they say yes to their captain and they enter the battle, there's a brotherhood that gets formed that's so powerful. You could travel the world. I experience it in countries I've never been. I land there. I, I meet men who are lit up alive in the mm -hmm. Lord in an instant. You're brothers. Amen. Whether it's Africa, so Asia, it's it's a work of God. Except for and, Canadians, uh, right? Except for Canadians. <laughs> yeah. no, I just get yeah. I just with some great Canadians at the men's men's leadership alliance. I'm thinking of Sean up there in Calgary, a police captain up there. Just instant yeah. brotherhood. Except for he's Canadian. But other than that, it's just <laughs> yeah. this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Till next week. Uh, you know what we say here, Peter, is we say Viva Cristo Rey. So I don't know if you uh, want to shout it a little bit with me, but. Uh, Viva Cristo Rey! Cristo Rey! Hey Amen. We had Amen. the guys. Amen. We had the guys shout that at the men's meeting right at the very end, the last thing that they they did. And I think we woke up a few people in the hotel. Yeah, okay, we'll great. be. We've already overgone by a whole minute, Peter. Thanks for joining us. God bless you, brother. Okay, aloha. Bye bye. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.